Urban Parks, baby. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm Liliana Griego, and this morning I am here at Rio de Los Angeles State Park. Today we are going to be exploring this beautiful urban park, and we're going to be learning about 100 acres of open space right adjacent to the LA River. I'm really excited today because we're going to be speaking to bird whisperer Tanya from Debs Park Audubon Center and we're also going to be talking to a state parks representative to tell us about the history of this area and the future of this site and of the river. Ooh, let's go over here, the Munias. They're right there. Oh yeah, oh they're making a nest or something, right? That's really late in the nesting season. These birds are so cool looking, they look like little dinosaurs. Yay! I love Munias. So now that we're entering fall, are we gonna start seeing some birds migrating through during this time? Yeah, for sure. A lot of warblers are gonna be passing through, so specifically we'll have a lot of Wilson's warblers, the Townsends. Mm -hmm. and Those are cool. Magellar rays. We'll have yellow rump, which is probably going to oh, be yeah, our most. Oh yeah, the yellow rumps. Yeah. They'll come back. For sure, they'll be our most. <laughs> the uh, butter butts. Warblers, <laughs> the butter butts. Um, we'll also get some sparrows. The most common one is white crown. So oh, yeah. here in Los right. Angeles with fall migration, I know it's here when I see the yellow rumps everywhere and when I see right. the white crowns everywhere. Do you think we're here. seeing them differently now, like because of climate change and the, yeah, and so the temperatures? Yeah, I think that that's going to be I mean, 2020 in general has been a really crazy year with all the wildfires. Right, yeah. You know, there's been a lot of die-off, unfortunately, of birds. Mm. I mean, and the lack of insects, actually. That's what they pinpoint it. But, I mean, there's just so much natural disasters that that will definitely have an impact, I think, on fall migration as well. Of course, with fall migration, right, it's also all your shorebirds will oh, have okay, a yeah. temporary window. And that's actually now. So cool. we have our willets, we have our wimbrows, we have our plovers back and things like that. So where are we? What, what are we in right now? So here in Rio, we're in this area we call the bioswell. So here, actually we're gonna have some Canada goose flying over, if we can hear them. Can hear them. Look, there they oh, go, there they, are. there they go. Oh, it's a big flock. Ooh, there's a lot of them in that V formation. We're in this bioswell, so it's supposed to be a natural annual pool. With the LA River naturally around it was a lot of riparian habitat, but also areas where with the heavy rains, you know, the LA River would either expand or it will form little micro pockets around the, the river itself. Right. This biosoil here in this park is supposed to be like that. So if you actually come during the spring season or anytime during the heavy rain, you will see this biosoil fill up and, and form oh, really? a little small pond. Oh, wow. And this little small pond will actually support a lot of birds that you will also find in the LA River. So mm. you will find great blue herons here, you'll find great egrets, mm. you'll find snowy egrets, and even sometimes ducks all around this, this wow. park. So it does really form that small micro habitat mm -hmm. that you know a lot of parks don't offer. And when it's dry, it's also supporting wildlife. Correct, right? correct. You have a lot of annuals also coming up, like this guy here. Is this native? This is native. What is what yeah, is this? It? Is telegraph weed. These annuals come up. Right, and that creates this annual habitat mm -hmm. that a lot of our bird species will really be able to thrive in. Right, and what kind of birds do you normally find in this area? Oh, a lot of sparrows. Sparrows seem to really love this area. Bush tits, we find a lot as well, and even house finches. Those plants are really sometimes with support being able to build that nest. And actually talking about nests, you probably have someone. Oh yeah, oh cool, very nice. Any idea what it could be? Or... So when you're looking at really messy nests, my guess is always house finch because they're one of the messiest nest makers. Now that nest is not fully formed oh. or we're also really behind the breeding season. So it could have been that that nest got deteriorated. So that's oh. actually not a full nest right now. Okay. Oh, what do we have up there? House finches? Oh yeah, there goes your house finches. Can you explain just a little bit about Audubon Center at Debs Park and the work that you guys are doing? So the Audubon Center at Debs Park is located actually five miles up northeast from this site. Their overall mission is to be able to connect people to nature, but also be able to intersect the bird issues with also social issues. 
So we decided to go ahead and adopt this park as one of our habitat enhancement projects. Here at Rio, you'll see that it's a very urban park. You have your active recreation, you have your baseball fields, you have your basketball, you have your tennis courts, you have your soccer fields. People are here for the sport related activities, right? But then you also have your passive recreation like this bioswell. This urban park is really able to sustain what the people needs and wants are, but at the same time be able to provide that habitat for our wildlife to be able to coexist with people. Well, thank you so much for coming out this morning and sharing your knowledge with us. We really appreciate it. Oh, thanks. Always a pleasure, Liliana. <laughs> Now we're about to learn a little bit more about this wonderful urban park and the future for this site and the river. Hi, I'm Selena Castillo. I am Community Engagement Interpreter at LA State Historic Park. And right now I'm at Rio de los Angeles State Park and I'm wearing a mask to stay safe. So within the California State Park system, there are 280 state parks. There are a few that are um, urban parks, right? So just like Rio de los Angeles State Park, it is surrounded by thousands or millions of people in the Los Angeles County. Um, but Rio de los Angeles in particular is half managed by the city. And I think that that's really important for the local communities because of their requests. Where we are standing right now, where it's just dirt trails and a little bit more of a natural native plant setting. And so this is where we do our habitat restoration work. This park really shows the beautiful collaboration that can happen. You mentioned with the city and state, but also different nonprofits. Can you talk a little bit about what's the work you guys are doing around restoration here in the area? We have been working with the California State Parks Foundation for many years and for a while now here at Rio. And recently, before quarantine, we were working with Audubon at Debs. Because they have that bird focus, they know what kind of plants we should put in the ground for that in particular. The 100 Acre Partnership is a partnership between the City of Los Angeles, California State Parks, and MRCA. We are also going to be using the G1 parcel of Taylor Yard and the G2 parcel at Taylor Yard. The G1 parcel is also known as the Bowtie Project. All of these sites will become a green space for the community. It is an ongoing effort to ultimately listen to what the community wants, their needs and their concerns, and come up with a plan that will enhance the habitat, provide active and passive recreation for the communities, and really create this world-class green space. We can really see how close G2 is from here, but also how we can't access it, right? <laughs> which I think is gonna be a key role for state parks in linking all of these spaces together. We look forward to the day when we can just walk over to G2 and then walk over to the future Bowtie State Park. It's gonna be really amazing. So close yet so far. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> that's what it feels like. Right but thank now. you so much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate it. Thank you for sharing all your knowledge with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I hope that this brings awareness to those who are watching. If they want more information about the 100 Acre Partnership, you could go to 100acrepartnership.org. Well, that was a beautiful morning. We got to search for our feathered friends with Tanya from Debs Park and we were able to learn a little bit about this wonderful urban park and the future of the 100 Acre Partnership from Selene. Thanks so much for tuning in and happy birding. Finding Feathered Friends is brought to you by Anheuser-Busch and Toyota Financial Services.